How's it going everyone? It's Gadgets Boy. Welcome to another video. And in this one, I have this uh, device here the, from Planet Computers. It's the Cosmo Communicator and uh, it's got this full QWERTY keyboard. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. If you think a physical QWERTY keyboard on a smartphone is a thing of the past, then you might want to think again. Or maybe you're right, time will tell, uh, because this, the Cosmo Communicator, is Planet Computers, a London-based tech company's second stab at keeping uh, PDA physical keyboard dreams alive. If anyone remembers the 1997 uh, Zion, if I'm saying it right, Series 5, this will bring back a lot of memories. Uh, Design-wise, it's bulky, but it's uh, to be expected as it has a clamshell form factor which, when opens, reveals a keyboard and a big display. It's already clear that this is aimed at uh, the workforce and probably not something that you and I uh, would inquire about or seek out to buy and use daily. This is something that I'd get my employees so that they can leave their bulky laptops in the office and it's not a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 for sure when it comes to looks and it's not as older looking like the Cyan Series 5 but it still somewhat looks outdated as well. There seems to be a mix of metal and hard plastic, but whatever it is, it feels super solid. Uh, if you drop it, it might do more damage to the victim, so whatever it lands on, than the actual communicator itself. On the lid, there's a fingerprint sensor integrated into a button for navigating the front display. A 24 megapixel camera is there with flash and a 1.9 one inch AMOLED touchscreen. Under the button is also LED, an LED indicator light for when it's on charge, so you can see it's charging. Up top or to the right is a power button, a USB-C port uh, for attaching external peripherals or attachments. And to the left uh, or the bottom is another USB-C port for charging the Cosmic uh, Communicator. I keep, call I keep <laughs> trying to call it a calculator. Uh, and you also get a 3.5 mil headphone jack as well. It also has a stereo speaker uh, that's really loud. So if you were be to be showing a video to a client, for example, on the move, you can do that for sure without worrying about sound quality at all. Front screen is tiny, so you won't be getting any much work done on here. In fact, you can't do anything really on there. It's just for notifications and uh, a quick launch at some of the uh, some of the features like Torchlight that you can actually quickly uh, glance through your messaging as well, for example. Uh, sorry, message notifications as well. So then you can go into the actual communicator and view the message if you really want to do so. What I find about this is though, it's actually quite good for productivity. So you don't have to keep looking at your phone and open it up and on and all that kind of stuff. You can also use it to activate that camera as well. So if you want to use the camera on the front, uh, you can do so as well. Although it lags when you open it up, when you activate the camera, uh, because I don't think the front uh, side of the display is actually designed or powerful enough to handle this kind of operation. Opening the clamshell itself has a nice uh, spring to it as well. Uh, it springs open quickly and has a satisfying feedback when you close it as well. Uh, the Cosmo uh, communicator is mainly designed to to be used in landscape mode, like a mini laptop almost, uh, but you can download an app to force it into portrait mode. I didn't do it, but I know that it's possible to do so. That way you can actually view your Instagram stories properly since it's running Android 9, uh, so you can still download those sort of applications, but in landscape mode, it just doesn't make sense. You have a 5.9 inch 2160 by 1080 pixel uh, display. It's 18 by nine aspect ratio and gives you 403 PPI, and which is more than enough in terms of brightness and using it for work on the go for things like browsing. Uh, you also get, and watching videos as well. The keyboard is also backlit as well and you get individually illuminated keys with five brightness levels so you don't have to blind yourself when you're using it. As well as the Android 9 OS, you get 128 gig of internal storage, you get six gig of RAM, and in this day and age, six gig of RAM is not a lot, and neither is 128 gig of internal storage. But again, keep in mind, this will be used mainly for storing documents, which are quite small in file size. But if you really wanna store media files like photos and videos, you can also expand it using the micro SD card. He has a MediaTek Helio P70 inside it, which I'm guessing uh, would help keep the, keep the cost low for the company, but uh, it still does the job. More on the inside though, there's a five megapixel camera and the battery is a 4,220 milliamp hour battery which lasts easily a day with no issues at all in my experience. Planet Computers have also overlaid the operating system with some of their own applications that's uh, geared towards getting work done. So in settings, there's a dedicated Cosmo settings area where you can adjust things like your keyboard lighting, for example, uh, sorry, the backlight. Uh, otherwise, there isn't much else in the settings to, to tinker with. Uh, tinker with. The display is big, but you still have big bezel, bezel, which seems like a waste and it looks outdated as well, if you ask me in terms of design. And on the keyboard, there's a planet button when, when you click it, it looks a bit like a Windows key on Windows computers. And with this, you have access to a couple of Microsoft applications like Windows and Excel, sorry, Microsoft Word and Excel. You have Skype, Airmail, Agenda, Notes. You have LEDs in as well, which uh, lets you configure some of the LED animation to identify and match 
uh, callers as well. So you can modify this depending on what notification comes through. But I think this is useless and pointless in my opinion. And uh, you also get a database application on there as well. The Cosmos camera is okay and that's as far as it goes for me. It's nothing to really write home about. It's not one for taking anything groundbreaking like you would on your Samsung Galaxy device, for example, or an iPhone, but it's more than enough for social media images uh, or just to add, add to your documents if you're uh, adding you know, uh, shots of a location for architects, for example, you can do so on there. In terms of video, you can shoot full HD videos. Uh, it also has electronic image, stab image stabilization there as well. And by default, the image quality is set to 18 megapixels, but you can change this to 24 megapixels so you get that full resolution. The front face of the camera is very poor to use. I, I just don't want to touch it, uh, but it's all right for your Skype calls or Zoom calls as well. The standout feature, of course, is that full QWERTY keyboard, which is pretty good once you get a hang of typing with it. It's tiny, so you definitely have to get used to, to typing on it. I couldn't really get used to it. Uh, you can comfortably type on it on a table uh, or holding it if you like, if you really want to. Although I find placing it on a, on a stable surface on a table is much more of a better experience than holding it in, in your hand and trying to type on it. Since it's designed to be used in a landscape mode, uh, it means it's quite awkward to use when the keyboard is not in use. So if you just want to use the touchscreen alone as a device on its own, uh, it's quite awkward, especially in portrait mode, as you can't hide that keyboard or fold it uh, way behind the screen. So you just have to get used to that as well. Actually, back on that keyboard as well, it's actually not easy to type on. And I find that the key, key travel is not the best as it took me longer to put together even this script right now and using it uh, normally day to day. You have to press harder on the key uh, on the keys uh, sometimes to actually get something happening. And that's quite annoying at times. If the Cosmo communicator is trying to compete in the world of the likes of the Samsung Galaxy Note or the Z Fold 2, then it's not a match in that area at all. But where I really see this excelling is uh, for bespoke applications for the workforce. So if you run a business where uh, you want a robust device to run your bespoke applications for your staff, then this is perfect. If you have the time for it as well, you can also get Linux operating system on here, which means you can do way more with it as well. Uh, it could also be great as a device for developers as well. I can envisage them coding on the go on this thing. In the UK right now, uh, whilst I'm reviewing this, this will cost you £601 to buy. But taking its portability out of the equation, you can get it on a Magic Book 14 right now for around £550, which lets you do way more than you can do on this. So again, the only reason I see this is for nostalgia and running those bespoke applications on there. It also makes me wonder what you'd rather get, what you're better off with. You can get a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus today right now for about £500, and you can just get a keyboard case for it and you get the same experience uh, in a nutshell. Anyway, over to you guys. What do you think? Does it tickle your fancy with its uh, nostalgic looks, the keyboard? Uh, where do you see this fitting in a list of smartphones that are out right now? Let us know in the comments below. But in the meantime, if this is your first time on the channel, please do subscribe. All relevant links will be in the description area and hit that bell notification as well so you'll be one of the first people to know every time there's a new video up on the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.